Hey guys, welcome to Clockwork Dandy Noodles. This is the show I've been waiting for, so I'm very excited to finally bring it to you. It is the Apothecary Diaries. We are going to be doing it in one episode, one episode breakdowns. I'm not doing a mega episode because I've got too much to say. I started doing my notes and I was with the intention of doing this as a big mega episode, but I realised I had way too much to say and I wouldn't be doing the show justice by breaking it down in a more weakened form. I want to talk about all the aspects of episode one without really having to crush it down for making time. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you're as, as excited as I am. I am mainly here for the medical aspect, the de detective aspect. There's obviously a big mystery going on in the court. Somebody is poisoning people, but I'm very, very excited for this. My thesis was actually on medicine, so I've got a lot of interest in the medical aspects. Even in episode one, there's some bits where I can really go, okay, actually, I know similar aspects in Western medicine and history that I can actually relate this to. Very excited and welcome to my show. If you've not seen my channel for the first time, I'm Clockwork Dandy Noodles. We break down anime on a weekly basis. I'm generally going for more detective slash mystery shows lately and I really seem to be getting into them. But we do have other shows breaking down on the channel. Also got Spy X Family and Ancient Mega Sprite going on too. I've also got a special video going out on Monday. So make sure you are having a look and subscribe and hit the bell button just so you don't miss that out. We are trying some new formats. I've been working on something for a little while so I really want to see what you guys think that goes down on Monday. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Today's episode video question i've got three of these to record back to back i'm not looking forward to this the first question is going to be a nice easy one are you a cat person are you a dog person you can go both i understand this is a very difficult question i've had both i've had dogs and i've had cats i primarily prefer cats but i don't dislike dogs i hate this stigma that if you're a dog person you hate cats if you're a cat person you hate dogs i don't hate any animal apart from wasps because wasps suck i like cats there's a lot of aspects of cats i really enjoy having and i love my current cat she's amazing even though she is loud in the morning at six o'clock demanding her food although it was half five this morning so even earlier but i don't dislike dogs i work in a pet store i have I've worked for nearly 10 years with dogs and cats. I don't dislike any of them. This might be easy for you. You might actually have an outright preference. So I guess it's going to be which is your preference because I don't think I know too many people who hate one or the other. It's more a question of which would you prefer to own if you could have one or both. You might decide that you want to have both cats and dogs as well. We're only breaking down episode one here. There's going to be three days succession of having these going up because I need to get them up ready for next week's episode because I think it goes back to weekly uploads next week. Episode four will only come out on Sunday next week. Let's quickly talk about the OP. The OP is really nice. It's very fast paced. So it's going to set the pacing of the show. There's that nature herb focus, anything with the apothecary back in, especially earlier medicine, even today's medicine. We still have a lot of medicines based in nature. A lot of stuff nowadays becomes synthesized. This is a period of time where you'd be using the plants, the world around you to create things like medication. I love the fact that you've got this passing of time aspect as well because the trees the sun kind of changes the colors change it does feel like we're going to have quite a fast-paced plot you see mc in the court it does flash to her but then there's the court mc where she's actually in the dress and there's a bit of a transformation i would presume that we're gonna maybe see both and there's this older mc that maybe we're gonna see at some point the second mc has a lot more age and sensuality i do think that it could also be a sign that with the two merging at the end, they're both basically part of the same person. She's got the ability to be this meek child or she's going to have this ability to be someone who can play the court. Because a lot of this stuff, when it comes to these animes, having a good head on your shoulders to actually be savvy in the courts. And you're going to see this with this show, no doubt. You're going to have to be savvy and be careful of how you act and who you're being friends with. I am looking forward to seeing some of those court aspects in the show. Original Chinese source, but it's handled by Japanese studios. Primarily released by Netflix. Funny thing was, I told my friend a show I was really excited for 
had just dropped three episodes. They joked, who is this? Netflix. And I was like, oh my God, yeah, no, it's Netflix. They've dropped three at once. At least it allows people to get that free episode rule out the way done in one day because you can go, oh, I'm going to watch all three. No, this show's not for me. Or yes, it is. This show is definitely for me. I'm very excited. The OP, I think, is very, very nice. I love the colours. The animation of this show is beautiful. There's some really nicely animated parts. A few little street shots that we get to set the scene. This is China. This is colourful. Look at the bustling streets working with these women. Very quickly to set Momo's actual character. You can see that she's obsessed with her experiment. She's very savvy throughout the show that she stands out quite a lot with how logical she is because you do get to see a lot of superstition rattling around the court which is of course paramount to this period of time you get it in the west as well especially people who are unable to read or not privy to universities especially in the west in the uk if you didn't have access to college or university most people would see a quack selling a medication on the corner medicine that was understood by the people which obviously isn't medicine old wives tells how you should do this if you're feeling sick i would note that when i first read the rundown for the show to see if i wanted to watch it or not they had it as momo being sold being sold off into the palace i don't know whether they've changed their mind and they've had her kidnapped instead or whether they've still kept it ambiguous because she does state was i kidnapped or was this planned so she doesn't know if her dad actually sold her off or not we didn't really see him for more than one frame it's really difficult to say that he did and he wanted the money or something but it would be interesting to see if they have changed their minds. They originally wanted her to be sold into the palace and now she's been kidnapped into the palace. She says I'm being paid. She's in a paid role and it only lasts for two years. I will be free at the end of two years if nothing happens, obviously. Because she says I'm too plain to be raised into a state status of concubine. It's not going to happen. So thankfully in two years I'm going to be able to leave. I don't know if that's now going to be the case now that she's been promoted to a lady in waiting. Showing Momo to be pretty relaxed relax this is my situation now fine i accept it i'm gonna adjust to my new life she's more worried initially when she's kidnapped about her dad and there was obviously lots of little interesting shots to hint that she was gonna get kidnapped amongst all of that color beautiful bustling china there were these little quick shots to the people at the table looking at her eyeing her up the opening shot is her in the cage very quickly they got the kidnapping aspect out of the way because they wanted her in the court clearly that's where we needed to be the mystery as well being set up very very quickly i also appreciate it's also nice to get a lowdown of the palace life via Momo's inner thoughts. I can sometimes be a bit harsh when it comes to narration, but this works. If narration is done properly where it makes sense, it's logistical, I'm fine with it. She's having a talk to herself. I talk to myself. If I was in the same situation, I probably would have little chats with myself because I've been kidnapped. I don't really know the people around me. It's very close to one of the girls in the court, but so I understand why she's talking to herself. There's this many people here. This is what's going on. We're getting our lowdown via her talking to herself. She also tells us about the power struggle between the two head concubines, courtesans. I'm going to get words wrong on this, so do bear with me as I get my vocabulary right. It's very infrequent that I will watch Chinese anime. I've watched a few. We also had Raven of the Inland Palace two seasons ago, which went down very well. Two head women at the moment who have got the babies. That is our main power struggle. Really, one had a girl, one had a boy. Naturally, the boy would have been favoured because that would have been the heir. The proper heir would have been chosen. The woman would the surviving child who was a female you don't have female emperors the likelihood is she would probably be married to an emperor but i don't know enough about chinese history and going with what i've learned via the show it's power struggle the women don't trust each other there's actually a slanging match them doing that in front of people i can imagine isn't a good thing because it's always about how you're perceived when it comes to the court it's having a shouting match isn't good for either of them but we don't know if there's a third woman floating around that could be setting this up or not. That's why the mystery is set up very quickly. It's also very sad, very, very fast because you see a child die. It's powerful. The tone is established very quickly. And the fact that it's makeup being poisoned. Makeup is poison, if that makes sense. I've studied the West and obviously in the Tudor period, we have the white face paint that Queen Elizabeth would wear. It would have lead or sometimes arsenic within it. The wigs you're seeing in the portraits, they're all just wigs. A lot of people at the period would have them because lice were rampant. But at the same time, we were told by uh, actual medical local accounts that Queen Elizabeth had 
pock marks. So she had actually pocked skin. So that's why she would dull up even more, more makeup, but it was killing her very slowly. Stuff was dangerous. There is also this threat of being beheaded. Even the richer would have this on their shoulders, but they'd have to mess up really bad. The Raven of the Inner Palace, one of the higher women do end up getting a bad fate. I think she is killed. So there's a lot of this going on. It's this threat of being punished. It explains Momo's actions, the fact that she doesn't do anything outright. She doesn't stop the women and shout, by the way, this is poison. She doesn't get interrupt them and tell them there and then. She can't do that. It makes some of her actions being a bit more meek, being a bit more having to take a roundabout way understandable in fact as well as she doesn't want to make a scene because she wants to escape in two years you can see that she doesn't want to draw attention to herself Jinshi, i believe his name is the master of the court or he's the head of the rear court that we're in at the moment he's very quickly set up to be the man that everybody goes to superstition rocking around the courts all the girls are whispering about a curse and we can see momo's logical reasoning head saying there's no such thing as curses it's likely to be this this she you can see her line of reasoning too it must be hereditary oh if it's not hereditary it must be this because she notices when the women are shouting at each other they both look sick it's something that they're both doing that is making them sick and we're also told that three children before have also perished as well it makes sense that it's makeup or someone poisoning the makeup to maybe even a higher degree that is causing this jinshi i think is quite a beautiful character i would be interested to see how people come up with ships with this character because he is a, a eunuch you can still have love without that aspect so it would be interesting to see if that is pushed because that does seem to be the ship that i've seen floating around i've only seen snippets of pictures so i haven't seen anything i haven't spoiled myself i know that he's a very important character because obviously he's the one who pulls strings and he allows things to happen a crutch for the main character so it's not going to be a heavily romantic show i think raven was meant to be pushed as a bit more romantic than this as you can see with him even touching her shoulder she brushes him off it's to show you that momo is just not interested i'm going to be interested to see how this aspect is played because i don't think it was advertising itself as a romance romance wasn't in the tags when i looked but at the same time they also said she was going to be sold into court and she wasn't so i don't know how much has really changed he's a very cool character and i like the fact that he's got a head on him it also shows him to be quite cunning when he gets all of the laundry girls in he writes the note holds it up and he knows that the girl who wrote the note can read. Oh, God damn it, I can read it. Everyone else is then just dismissed. I think that's going to make it more interesting because understanding of what I read about the show, he's going to be also smart and help with a lot of the pulling of the strings to make things happen. He's going to be a crux. She finds him irritating, but at the same time, he's going to be very useful. He was able to figure out that the girl was obviously a laundry lady and you see the stitch marks going up her skirt i didn't even connect the dots at one point i just saw the stitching presumed she was just poor and she was unable to fix her clothing uh, or she had to do it by hand that's all i read into that i thought that was very very clever the moment where she is forced to come out and explain why she knew about the poison or the makeup i thought that was very clever but also very sad because you see people trading their lives for the sake of being beautiful which is a very realistic issue that i think we even had in the tudor period and even today people will sometimes do dangerous things for the sake of beauty like back alley botox when people go and can't afford the real thing get the fake thing and then end up causing a lot of damage sad trade-off for looking beautiful and especially in a period like this where it's all about your looks all about your reputation but in a sad twist, from what I think I got from the flashback, Momo's mother also lost her life to maybe something similar. Maybe she too was a courtesan. Maybe she was a concubine. I'm not I'm not quite sure with that aspect, but it definitely seems like she got sick. You can see via her reaction of thinking about that memory, it's quite painful to her. The promotion at the end is quite nice, but again, it probably is going to ruin Momo's plans for getting out of the court in two years. But it is also going to forward the plot. It's going to allow us to do more. It's going to allow Momo to do more. She's going to have a slightly higher status. So she'll be allowed to do a little bit more. Get into the inner palace perhaps. Very excited to see where it goes. We also get a little hint that somebody is poisoning the army. So somebody's definitely got it out for the current palace standing. It could be a political thing it could be somebody within even china who doesn't like who's sitting on a throne it doesn't have to be the mulan style with i think it was the huns i don't 
even remember. It's likelihood that it's going to be somebody who can benefit. Somebody's trying to wipe out people. They're trying to get rid of any of the heirs because they don't want anybody exceeding the throne or anything. From the best of my knowledge, if the emperor was to suddenly pass away, either his mother gets to be a stand-in regent very quickly or top concubine is the standing regent so somebody trying to poison them off makes sense from my understanding of the plot there's a darker plot going on so it's not just a case they're using makeup and over some time it's poisonous and dangerous and it's killing off the, the, the kids we'll have to see how that goes the end credit really is just kind of a roll credit situation but it still fits the theme we've got all the plants going on there's that magical gold at the end as well there always seems to be this gold transformation where she suddenly changes and things get better in the main poster when she's walking towards the palace there's a gold leaf also in the plants whispering behind her which i think is really really nice because a gold is prosperity so there's always this gold mixed in around momo to show you that she's meant for good things she's meant for something bigger she's meant for great things and i can't wait to see where this goes it's a very nice first episode. I can't wait to look at the next two episodes because I don't actually have to wait. I've just got to get this edited. You guys will be seeing this on the Sunday. I'm probably going to release second episode Monday and then the third episode on Tuesday. It will be Monday mornings. I'm going to try a different time slot because I'm not really getting the greatest view count anymore with my old slot of doing it quite late for the UK. I'm going to adjust it and we will have to see if an adjustment on time helps the show out a lot. Maybe it won't, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really hope you guys are going to enjoy this show, because this is the show in particular I'm very excited to bring to you. I think the first episode was very promising. It's beautifully handled. The characters are awesome. I think Momo herself being quite logical and quite not really being into the whole touching on the shoulder thing was funny. Brushing him off was hilarious. I think it's going to be fun. I really am looking forward to seeing where it goes. What is the dark mystery at the end of this and where are we going to end up at the end in like 12 episodes time? So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys are looking after yourselves and let me know down below what your preference to dogs or cats is. Thank you so much. Bye bye.